gosh. Hello, hello, hello. It is me, Contessa, and I am in the corner again with Marie. And holy smokes, we um, have no idea what this energy is. This is this beautiful light here. It's not. Really it is not. Uh, yeah, and we are just super excited because we actually called in some crystals today to talk about spirit guides, lifting the veil, the full moon, and totem animals. Totem animals. And I guess there's also energy that kind of follows and is around that's a healing energy. This is intense. Blue. <laughs> Blue. So we don't know what's going on, but we just thought this would be cool to totally show you. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we're going to just get on with this show with this beautiful, amazing energy near us. I love it. Woo, it feels amazing and intense here. This corner has so much energy. I love it. All right. So, whew, it, it really feels amazing right now. So, um, just give me a second. <laughs> Woo, it feels amazing. Okay, feels so good. I brought Marie back um, to definitely talk about the corner. And like I said, totem animals and, you know, how they affect us and the lessons that they teach us when we're really going inward to ask our guides and our angels um, for help with our spiritual path. So how do we do that? You know, a great way for me is always looking at crystals and tuning my energies and, of course, finding amazing healers to sit with me and kind of dive deeper into this question. So, Marie... Let's talk about this moon. Let's we talk started about talking this about this moon, and like this was crazy. She was calling it. She said, "Well, she said, what? What is this moon?" I said, oh, "We're like, what is this moon all about?" Cold. It, yeah, but it is. It's the cold moon. We had to bundle up some more. It's Very the cold, cold moon. and it legitimately is the cold moon. It really so, is. It really is. what are we doing with this cold moon? Like, what? I mean, what happens when we have crystals? <laughs> I put mine outside for the full moon energy, but how do we feel these emotions? I know I start insomnia starts happening. Yeah. What about you? Well, insomnia, things like that happen. Cold moon, and what that's trying to say is this is the moon where you're looking the most internally at yourself. Insomnia because what is that? That's your third eye thinking too much. It won't stop. Because you're worried about all the things that are going on internally. you got things that are going on in your head. So the cold moon reminds us to keep that clear. Keep what priorities you need in place and keep your yeah. brain thinking the way it needs to. When you have anxiety, when you have insomnia, that means your third eye is thinking way too far ahead for your own good. And, yeah, Same and way that you have worry. depression, yeah, that you're smog. thinking about the past too much. Yeah. So if you have either one of those, you need to realize that you need to be in the present more in your present feeling, in your present body, how are things going right now, and keep yourself in line and keep yourself grounded, especially with the cold moon being very introverted. Hold on, whoa, whoa, things... I'm gonna side bust. Mm. What is grounding? A lot of us understand who are new to crystals, but what is this grounding technique? This is about energy, right? It's so we wanna energy. ground our energy. What are techniques that you would do? Like for grounding. Well, like we've talked about before, I'm really, really big on drumming. Yes. To me, it vibrates oh, yeah. some of the crazy thoughts out of my head. Um, a great way to ground, which is totally easy, that doesn't take any time, especially if you're in California. California. Go outside <laughs> barefooted on your grass. Yes. And stand in your grass. Yes. Enjoy your backyard. If some people don't have grass, some people don't have grass. Mm -hmm. You can still imagine roots from your feet going into the ground just like grass does. You want to be grounded. You want to know where you are. You don't want to be having your brain thinking a million things at once. Grounding is knowing where you are and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sit on the ground. Put that root chakra in the <laughs> grass. Oh. Stop. Just stop and sit. Stop yeah. and sit. You I mean, deserve to stop yeah. and sit. And seriously, and then that's the best part is because once you do actually sit down and the full moon reminds us yeah. to like take a seat because you you kind of like just to sit with your friend, get that message is the same as sitting with your spirit guide, you know, and getting those messages. Watch us, watch us. We're grounding right now. Uh -huh. Look how pretty you are. Aww. Look at this cool light that happens when we're together. <laughs> it's just, I love this. I it's love cool. this. So we definitely picked a crystal that was high, high vibrating. <laughs> high vibrating. And mine isn't as fun and kinky as hers is. But mine definitely embodies the wholeness of woman, that 
beauty of being able to just be comfortable with yourself and letting nurturing come into yourself first, letting forgiveness come into yourself first, feeling like that aliveness of just being a human and like coming. So I'm going to bring out my rock. Ugh. And the sage is way over there and her kinky stone is over there. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> what did I do with my lighter? Hold on. I'm all over the place. I know, right? Because it's the full moon time. And you do get all over the place. Don't forget it's like, you know, vampire time. So watch out. Watch she out. Got her blood drawn I got my blood drawn today. How funny is that, right? You're like, oh, full moon vampires. La, la, la. Had to have my blood drawn today. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was good. Awesome. So keep in mind, it's the cold moon. As we're saging, we're all here together. We're all here in a community. Thank you for watching us. Yes. Thank you very yes. much. Love it. I love it. All right. I'm going to bring out my rock. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Her yes. very feminine rock and my very masculine rock. Yeah. I like to call mine the unicorn horn. Look at her rock. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's glowing. It is like, I want to play. You are a nasty little girl. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> but it is this this rock i like to bring out this is selenite this is a rock i like to bring out when i am wanting to talk to my higher spirits in a very gentle way maybe i'm feeling a little fragile maybe i don't need the message as hard as sometimes i need it maybe i need to be told very lightly and very calmly and very subtly i'll bring this out especially when healing when you have somebody that has went through a lot and a lot of traumatic stuff you bring mm. this out and it's it's uh, uh, to me it kind of feels like a a really subtle clear quartz but even more heavenly and divine so higher frequency in a really really gentle way to me it kind of feels like you know uh how, it's how your soft. grandma feels if yeah you, you it's, know, it's soft the quintessential grandma huh it's feeling. they're soft no. but, but be careful if you do have a selenite um no water no water it can no. burr off in your hand so you don't want to hurt them mm -hmm, no Sage they're babies things. They're babies. They're good yeah. babies. So I also know that this is something, though, that um, can ground you and yep. bring your vibration up really, really high. Yep. So uh, the messages that you would be hearing are going to be a little bit clearer, like, with your totem animals. Yep. Um, so I know my totem animals, when I've been asking my higher self something like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? And you know what? They come in your life in amazing, funny funny ways we'll so, talk about that in a second right so i'm i'm excited yeah right so i'm excited that um i'm excited that i got to bring this guy out very pretty, very pretty. so on right. totem animals we're talking about that um those are spirits too those yep. you're talking to your higher guides you're talking to your ancestors because they give you wisdom too you're talking about your totem animals too so let me ask you guys what is your favorite animal Yes, leave that in the comments below. I want to know. We want to know. What's your favorite animal? And I want you to just think about it for a second. Mm -hmm. What does that animal do that appeals to you so much? Or makes you so happy. Yes. Because I know a lot of the time, like, we have been having a day and we'll be out. And there are certain key animals that keep kind of, like, coming out in the day, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So something like a unicorn is going to mean what like to me this is representing like what i would think of in a totem animal as like a crystal form of a unicorn which is what i call my unicorn right is that unicorn. really yeah it is what i call stop it. no I that's so say, funny that is I what love I call it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the stuff we're talking about right totem animals are animals that in some way spirit they want to tell you something mm -hmm. so i mean clearly right you know contessa and her laughing foxes well no what's one of her totem animals <laughs> Right? So, foxes follow me everywhere. Right. So it makes, you know, sense. So to what like, does that mean to yeah. you? What does fox mean to you? When, when fox comes to you in spirit, how do yeah. you, what does that mean to you? Usually? I usually, um, when I have my totem animal come to me, I actually notice that it's times when I'm in despair or when I'm really, really excited. And the fox to me is like, he's he's just kind of a little bit interesting in the way that he lives and he's a little bit sneaky but he prepares a lot a lot of things and he's just you know feisty and fun and I love being I can't bumpy. see any relation at all to no. that I'm just kidding no. but that's what I mean there's things when you find an animal that you really like 
it does speak to you. For me and a lot of other people, it's crow or raven. Yeah. Um, I see them all the time. They, when they're doing certain things, it means certain things to me. Um, when they're eating, usually on the side of the road, that means to me I need to get something to eat because I haven't eaten yet. Um, and it's I okay. We get to few. take them. Yeah, we get to take them in. Yeah. The, and, and so I, I just challenge you to say, hey, you do have a totem mount. Everybody has mm-hmm. a totem mount. You have something that follows you around. It could be a dog. So, the funny <laughs> story. <laughs> Let's get to this. So, <laughs> we get a coffee earlier. Because I had to go see the vampire. And so, so we they were coffee. being sweet and get me a coffee. I love this. And right before we start, I finish off a little bit of coffee because I got like this cool all spice coffee. I want to get all the all spice at the bottom all so spice. I drink it. And I'm thinking there's like a leaf. And I'm chewing on it. It wasn't. It was a fly. It was was a fly. It was not good. (laughs) It still hurts my feelings. But what I did do is because, oddly, even though it's an awful way to show up in somebody's life, it it showed up. So it has a message for me. And what was it saying? It said that something, that things are going to change very rapidly for me and that I need to be on my toes and make sure that um, I'm ready for that and that abundance is coming my way, which you thought was really, really awesome and a whether chewing on a fly or not, it's still a blessing. <laughs> and take it as such. <laughs> but it's a good thing. Nats, one of my buddies has gnats that's around her all the time. And as soon as she acknowledged what they were there for in her life, they went away. Mm-hmm. And and that's how you know. And not all of the time do they go away. But um, oh, people have lions tattooed on them. I'm always looking yeah. at that. These tattoos that people have. They have koi fish. They have... Uh, lions they have panthers they have butterflies they have um shoot pincher bugs have totem significance every little thing so i get it but it makes sense when you like tap into something that's a higher vibration because you're actually able to be on the same conscious level as the animal Mm. as part of you and part of your existence and part of your learning so that's what's fun about you is because you tapped into this shamanic type of healing this is going beyond the veil seeing the different parts of the animals understanding like how they're teaching all of us mm-hmm. essentially had a love and heal too. Huh? Had a love and heal, which is what I we call it. in the yes. shamanic world their medicine. Yes. It's their medicine to you and they're giving it to you. Mm-hmm. And it's your choice to take it or not. And usually their medicine is really wonderful. And back to point eight, it's really grounding for you to sit and think of what you have in common with all the rest of God's creatures. Wait, I have a question for you though. What about these totem animals? Do they actually have a negative effect? Because I'm pretty sure some people are like, hey, wait a second. You know, it's all hoity toity, but is there a negative effect? There can be. And, and, and it's, and it, and you can think of it negative, but, but the, oh, for instance, um, uh, two of my totems are crow and hawk. Yeah. You start looking into crow and hawk, but you also, when you're looking in your totems, you want to know what their natural enemies are, mm. right? So oh, what being, would eat them, huh? What would eat them and what they eat. So oh. as crow, as hawk, I know that people that are really mousy, I don't get along with really well. They're not, I'm not, I don't get along with them as easy as I would anybody else because naturally mm. that is a natural predator to part of my spirit so in the same way too if you are a mouse you probably have a hard time getting along with people that have kind of crow or or I shouldn't say crow hawk energy because you feel like they're attacking you so in the same way like um with fox what's a natural predator to fox what does fox eat are you do you hang out with money rabbits yes (laughs) you're right Right? True, true. But no, no you want to look at the whole aspect of yeah. it. And, and and like I said earlier, with me having crow and hawk totem, um, if you know anything about crows and hawks, they don't get along at all. Actually, yeah. you use a crow call to keep hawks away. So I have internal battles sometimes. Right? <laughs> you have to know those things about yourself. But then going back to being the cold moon, mm-hmm. spirit animals help you to learn more about yourself. Yes. To know what's going on within yourself in a super <sighs> really cool way. Because then you can get like fox shirts and cool tattoos like foxes and stuff. <laughs> and that's always very cool. 
I know. I love it. This moon is so super cool. I love how it links to the crystals and then back to our totems. And I mean, because ultimately it's kind of hard when you're learning about yourself and what are the signs and symbols that your guides are giving you. And like opening up to that is like super fun. It's very fun. It's like figuring out a puzzle, but the puzzle's yourself. Or yeah. And you finally have the pieces and the picture and the time. Sit quiet. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank I am you. so excited she came and got to spend some time talking about totems. I know this is going to be a fun transition into the whole next year. Woo-hoo. So happy, happy, happy holiday times. Enjoy this beautiful, beautiful full moon. Whatever you guys are meditating on tonight, I hope that it is filled with extra, extra love and blessings. So, so much love to you. Mm-hmm.